Hi, my name is Paul Wessels. I'm the President and CEO of Western Copper and Gold. Western Copper and Gold is a single asset development company. We're developing the Casino Copper Gold project located up in the Yukon. The Casino project is one of the largest copper gold projects in Canada and actually one of the largest copper gold projects in the world. The project contains close to 11 billion pounds of copper, 21 million ounces of gold, and significant molybdenum and silver. When you actually benchmark this project, this is the fifth largest undeveloped copper gold project controlled by a junior mining company in the world. This is a project that we've been developing for a number of years, but really the past three years have been by far the most exciting years in the development of the company. In 2020, we essentially doubled the overall resource. If we go to 2021, we bring, uh, we bring out a, a PEA on the project looks very, very good. Jump to 2022, 2022 here, we have a feasibility study that we just came out. The other key development with the company is that we brought in Rio Tinto as a strategic partner. But first let's talk about that feasibility study. So this is a feasibility study up to date, came out in June of this year, includes all of the escalation, all of the inflation that we've seen over the year or over this past 12 months. 18 0.1% IRR, 2.3 billion net present value at 360 copper and $1,700 gold. Absolutely after tax numbers. Very, very strong economics on the project. Why are the economics as strong as they are? Really a couple key reasons. One, we have this core zone. It runs you know, over 0.6 copper equivalent, represents about 400 million tons. That's where things start. And then that is surrounded by another you know, the total resource is 3.6 billion tons, so significant resource. The other thing is the strip ratio. Strip ratio of life of mine of 0.43 to 1, absolutely one of the lowest in the, in the business, critical to the good economics on the project. Great project up in the Yukon. Yukon is a great area to be developing a mine. We've got good relationship with the First Nations, good relationship with the government. Got a great permitting team that we put together over the past 12 months, and we're looking to get back into permitting um, mid-year next year. The last and, and key part is really the relationship we have with Rio Tinto. Rio Tinto came in as a strategic investor uh, about, well, almost exactly to the day, 18 months ago, um, with the idea that they would come in, spend about 18 months looking at the project, and we did some specific drilling with them. We did some metallurgical work with them. We did we lots of work on the First Nation and the community. And that work is, is almost complete. It's about 99% complete. We actually just extended the agreement that we have with them on the, uh, on the 23rd of, of November. So we've got that agreement is good for another year. But really, the work is done. And the point, you know, we're at the point now with Rio Tinto where you know, they're evaluating the project and deciding what the next steps are going to be. Obviously, an exciting time to be a shareholder. So, you know, just to summarize, you know, this is a significant copper gold project, close to 11 billion pounds of copper, 21 million ounces of gold located up in the Yukon. Strategic investment from Rio Tinto. They've just confirmed that there are, you know, continued interest. We think there's going to be some more great announcements here coming up. And, you know, a copper market, which I haven't talked about, which is, you know, everybody loves copper for a number of very good reasons. And so a simple investment. WRN on both the TSX and the NYC American. Thank you. I'm Ken Armstrong. I'm the president and CEO of North Arrow Minerals. North Arrow is listed on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol NAR, and we're a diamond exploration company. Um, there aren't many companies right now that do what we do, but we're, we're really good at it. We have a lot of experience in finding diamond deposits, evaluating them, and getting them, in, getting them into production. And I've done that in Canada as well as in Africa. So I think um, the three highlights that I'm going to take you through in this, uh, in this short presentation will be to talk about now yet our most advanced project located in Nunavut, our pipeline of exploration or discovery stage projects in Canada, and also just to talk about the diamond market in general. And I'll, and I'll start there because, um, as I think isn't... Uh, 
very well appreciated. The diamond market's actually in pretty good shape right now. Um, diamond production is declining. Um, globally, production is off over 20% since it peaked in 2017. And now it's really expected to kind of flatline through the end of the decade or even longer because there really are no projects on the drawing board, no significant projects on the drawing board um, that would go into production in the short or even the near term to replace some of that falling production. And that declining production profile is feeding into what's really a pretty robust uh, environment for jewelry sales. Um, the best proxy we think for looking at jewelry sales is the U.S. market. It's about half of the world's the world's jewelry market. And in 2021, sales in the U.S. were up over 50 percent over not just 2020, but 2019, which is sort of the last normal year that we had. So this wasn't just a COVID bounce back. It was over and above the long-term trend that had been established. And sales um, so far in 2022, and we're almost at the end of the year now, have been tracking really well with what had happened last year. So it seems to be very real. Um, this increase in demand is holding, and it's feeding into this, this uh, declining production and this need for new discoveries. And that's where North Arrow and what we do, we think, really comes in. Um, the most uh, likely or project to quickly get into that that queue to get into production, our most advanced project is now yet. So as I mentioned, it's located in Nunavut. It's actually right on the Arctic Circle. The main deposit we call Q1 to 4 is located only nine kilometers from the hamlet of now yet. So we're able to work right from the community, which saves us costs. It allows us to hire uh, a significant number of local employees. Last program we ran in, in 2021 uh, two thirds of our workforce were local residents um, from the hamlet of Nauya, and we're very we're very proud of that. Um, another way we can take advantage of the locality is is the fact that we're on tidewater. It uh, reduces our costs just to get materials there. When we project forward of what the cost would be to get materials to site for more advanced programs or even for mining, if we get to that point, um, we think the cost of getting materials there would be about half of the cost um, that it takes for the diamond mines and the NWT to get materials to site when they utilize a, a winter road. Um, so the deposit itself is big. It's over 20 million carats. And what we're focusing on in terms of evaluation right now is a population of fancy colored diamonds that we see there. Um, with our partner, Burgundy Diamond Mines, we collected uh, a bulk sample in 2021 for the purpose of getting more diamonds so that we could really better understand the role that these uh, these fancy diamonds would take in, in, in the deposit. Um, the diamonds that we recovered from the, the deposit, what we were able to learn from that parcel is that about 10 to 20 percent of the diamonds are fancy in color, which is a really high proportion of fancy colored diamonds to have in a diamond population. It's very rare. And importantly, about 90 percent of those diamonds are considered to have orange as the primary color. And that's exceptionally rare and could have a really big impact, a positive impact on the diamond valuation. So in order for us to learn more about that, we've had the parcel um, this fall went through Antwerp where we had it uh, looked at and evaluated by a number of our contacts there. And then it's moved on to Burgundy's cutting and polishing facility in Perth, Australia, where the diamonds are now. And if things have gone according to plan while you're watching this, there should be some test polishing happening on some of those diamonds right now with the goal of showing that we can get uh, polished diamonds that uh, that have orange as the primary color, and that could mean on the order an order of magnitude higher price than we would see for top weight diamonds of the same size, cut, and clarity. So that's the kind of lift that we're we're looking for. Um, as we know, with more advanced projects, it takes it takes a while. Um, there can be longer uh, pauses between news, and news flow can be important for companies like North Arrow. So we're really taking a look at our exploration pipeline again. We have a, a pipeline of projects where we've made discoveries over the last uh, seven, eight, nine years, including our PICU project in Saskatchewan. Um, we made a discovery in 2014, 2015 there that led to a staking rush in that area of Saskatchewan um, based on initial diamond counts from our PK150 discovery, which was a really interesting discovery, exceptionally high diamond counts. And we think there's more discoveries to be made there. We have targets lined up that are ready to drill. Um, we announced some till sampling just last week um, that we completed this fall to follow up some new targets, sort of a new generation of targets that we've developed and we think is a pretty innovative way using deep machine learning um, to try and maybe identify targets that our geologists and geophysicists just don't see. Um, the platform, uh, deep machine learning at least, has been used successfully this past year at the Academy Mine, leading to new discoveries. So we think uh, it's a, a new way to look at, at exploration data sets. Um, we have a financing announced right now. It should still be open as you're watching this. You can, uh, it'll help us fund the drilling program that we want to do at PICU. You can go to our website, northarrowminerals.com for more information on that. 
how to contact myself, Ken Armstrong, Nick Thomas, our investor relations manager, um, and those to learn more about our diamond projects and diamonds in general. We have a, a number of good resources there. So uh, please go visit our website. Uh, and I just would like to thank Six for inviting us to be part of the Six Mix. Good afternoon. My name is Chris Huggins. I'm the president and CEO of Engineer Gold Mines. Uh, the Engineer Gold Mine is a historic past producer up near Atlin, British Columbia, or about uh, 35 kilometers to the um, southwest. And uh, it's an area that has, uh, has seen prolific uh, exploration uh, in the past, but not a lot of exploration uh, recently in, uh, in modern times. The engineer property in and of itself is uh, the property we've, we've acquired is about 35 kilometers along strike and about 10 kilometers at width. Contains the engineer gold mine itself, which uh, in the 1920s and 30s produced uh, over 18,000 ounces of gold, uh, almost 9,000 ounces of silver, and, uh, and actually the underground remains accessible to this day. Uh, another property that uh, we have that is contiguous uh, is the Tag property, which was acquired from CTC Gold back in 2020, and has seen uh, there's a there's a 43101 compliant resource on that property itself. Uh, and there's plenty of opportunity for expansion of that. Uh, to the south, there is a, a prospect called uh, the Juan River, which has enjoyed uh, some really spectacular um, um, uh, grab sample results that were of uh, in the order of uh, 260 grams per ton gold, 1300 grams per ton silver, uh, 4% of copper, lead, and zinc each. So truly spectacular numbers. That has um, seen a bit of exploration. Uh, the area has been delineated to be about 800 meters long strike and 200 meters width. Uh, there was a tiny amount of, of drill testing in there, only about seven holes uh, for a couple, uh, a couple thousand meters um, about 10 years ago. And that drilling wasn't uh, wasn't really seen as as a strong success. And we think there's huge opportunities for uh, for further development and delineation of that project in and of itself. On the engineer property uh, proper, as you said, it's it is a uh, past producing uh, gold mine, uh, very high grade gold and silver, uh, and even some of the the most recent operators, BC Gold, had a trench uh, from an area that they called um, shaft vein, which uh, 10 years ago produced results that included up to 15,000 grams per ton gold, which is astonishing out of a, out of a grab sample out of a trench. So there's uh, a ton of opportunity. There's a lot of excitement. There's a lot of historic showings around engineer, around the property itself. Uh, but none of it has the, 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 the challenge and the opportunity we have in front of us is that uh, all of these desperate properties haven't really been sit under one roof and under one corporate um, overview. So what I'm really excited about this winter is the opportunity to bring in uh, a team of, of geologists to help compile the data that we have from uh, 30 plus years and half a dozen different companies look at them in a, in a in a modern holistic approach uh put all this data into the system and really try to understand what we have in front of us uh develop some news uh from this data compilation and and undoubtedly kind of rediscovering new areas of of, of interest and, and targets on the property um getting out there and uh developing these targets uh really having a clear understanding of, of where, what kind of work needs to be done uh, to support the already existing uh, data sets. There's already been geophysics, there have been some soil samples run, but we don't truly know the, the true extent of, of what has been there until we have it all into one map and can really see what we have in front of us. Uh, and with that, once we have this data, uh, we start uh, generating some news and, and presenting out to the marketplace. I'm really excited about where I think we can go. The discoveries in front of us, they're uh, the historic showings have, have produced um, absolutely extraordinary results uh, in a number of different areas. And um, some of this, so much of this property just has not been uh, seen and enjoyed a modern exploration program. And that's really the opportunity we see in front of us. Um, even from the engineer property itself, there's a, there's a, we're along what's called the Llewellyn Fault Zone, which is a, um, uh, 
major fault system that go, runs from Alaska through through British Columbia and is really kind of a, a driver of the systems that we're seeing here and uh, the our property lies along the length of it. So there are uh, additional shears that have not been tested that we see in geophysics and we're uh, we're excited to bring this this historic property back to the marketplace, uh, back to the forefront with investors, um, share the exciting story and history that has been around the property and the opportunity for us to um, to come up with a new discovery. So we hope we'll, we hope you'll join us. Hope you'll follow the story. Uh, the company is Engineer Gold Mines, and the name is Chris Huggins. Thanks for your time. Hello, my name is Sandy Chin, President and CEO of Century Global Commodities. We're an iron ore development company based in Canada. Our projects are located mainly in the Labrador Trough, where top-tier mining companies such as Rio Tinto uh, and big steel mills like Austin Mattel are operating in. We have a total iron resource uh, developed over the last 15 years of 20 billion tons. Uh, about two of them are already at the pre preliminary economic assessment stage and one at feasibility study stage with a total after tax and net present value of over 5 billion uh, Canadian dollars. We have actually some very strong strategic industrial partners with us. We have actually the largest steel mill in the world with over 100, maybe 120 million tons of steel making capacity based in China, Bawu Steel as a strategic partner. And also Min Meadows uh, based in the same market, uh, which is a conglomerate of base metal mining and trading company, both of which are actually global Fortune 500 uh, companies. And they have invested heavily with us to have developed this uh, 20 billion tons of iron resources with two PEAs and a feasibility study. Our flagship project actually is uh, Joyce Lake, which is a high grade, shippable 62% ore grade uh, project uh, with a, a very uh, a simple uh, operation, basically comprised of a uh, crushing and screening with to no tailings generated and very easy to construct and operate. And this project, Joystick, is already at the feasibility study. We did one some seven years ago, about 2015, and we just updated with a new feasibility study, everything uh, recosted, uh, just uh, in uh, published uh, in October with the final report to come by about mid-December. And the project actually now has a lot stronger, more robust design, producing some $185 million of net present value, over 20% of IRR, both after tax, with payback period of about three and a half years. This project is very simple to operate, as I said, crushing and screening only, no tailings generated, and making it very easy to go through an environmental permitting process because the footprint is small and because it's simple. Uh, quarry type of operation, the time to construction actually is only one and a half years after a production decision is made. And other than the fact that it's got $185 million of net present value, uh, or the capex of 270, uh, George Lake actually has an innovative design in the context of the market where we're operating in. And we have actually innovated a a uh, special um, transportation processing strategy that will reduce our transportation costs very substantially and therefore producing a 300 better uh, net present value than it was done seven years ago. Hopefully that design will be an industry standard for the kind of operation that we're talking about. Over and about Joyce, uh, when we have that started and operating, we will proceed to work on a multi-billion dollar project, a multi-billion ton project, looking at at least 20 million tons of a year production with the backup of a very good first successful project. As a company, we've got very strong management. We've got experience, very loyal team with experience of running multi-billion mining projects and also running multi-billion mining companies. On the balance sheet, we got a strong working capital for the size of our company, for where we are, when we are. Uh, as a development company, we have actually um, $10 million of working capital. Uh, we have uh, run the company very conservatively, conserving our energy, focusing on develop the most valuable asset for the company. So over the last 10 years, even we went through a very tough bottom cycle, we have not raised a dollar. 
for the last 10 years been keeping advancing our project as we have today. I hope you find our story interesting. I look forward to talking to you if you would like to get in touch with us and hope you have a good rest of the day. Thank you. Hello. Thank you very much for taking the time to hear the Global Battery Metal story. My name is Michael Murphy. I'm the president and CEO of Global Battery Metals. Before we get into the five active projects, I wanted to point out two things that I believe differentiate our company. The first is the team. The second is the share structure. The team, well, we've done this before. For example, Cam Bell, one of our very hands-on directors, spent his career at Valet. He was head of exploration at Boise Bay. He was head of exploration at Sudbury. And he ran Valet's project origination group for over 10 years. The last company, mining company I was involved with, we took a sub-10 million market cap company, and at its peak, it was worth $2.5 billion. We raised over a billion dollars of debt and equity for exploration, development, and ultimately production. This one small company will produce nearly 500,000 ounces of gold this year. For those interested, the company's name is Torex Gold. It's an exciting time at GBML. We've been here for a while, long before it was trendy. The result of that is we've been able to acquire uh, these five properties on pretty attractive terms. Anyway, long before the prices of projects uh, skyrocketed. The result of all this is that most of the capital we spend actually goes into the ground, which I believe is where we're going to create the most value. Um, we have five projects, as I said, all will be advanced this year, but for today's, um, today's presentation, I'm going to focus on just two. The first one is the Northwest Linister Hard Rock Lithium property in Ireland. It's a 60,000 hectare uh, property. We've done all kinds of um, prospecting and sampling on it. We found all kinds of boulders with um, lithium grade, Li2O LI grade above 2%. Anything above 1% is usually considered economic. The issue up until now has been uh, we have not been able to figure out where these boulders and these samples are coming from. We now have made a discovery of an underground uh, pigmentite dike. We've done a whole bunch of work on it recently, sampling uh, the, the the ground around it, with the view that that's going to target that will help us target our first quarter drill program. We've sent in over 150 samples, more to come. We'll get assays on that by the end of the year. The second project I want to talk to you about today is the Lithium King project in uh, Utah. This is a brine project. This is interesting for three. Uh, this is interesting because it's got two of the three attributes that you need. For a mine. The first is location. Utah is a great place to operate. Uh, size. It sits on a massive underground aquifer. And grade. Well, grade is the unknown. So as a rule of thumb, three to 400 ppm should be economic. Uh, the DLE companies will have you believe that 50 part per million uh, can be economic, although we haven't seen that at a commercial, um, commercial scale yet. In Clayton Valley, 75 to 250 ppm is kind of the norm. Well, we've um, uh, been able to locate USGS historical shallow drill holes where the grade here was as high as 1,200 ppm. We've gone through the process the last couple of years of getting all the required permits, et cetera. They're all in place. In fact, we had in, planned on drilling in August of this year, but due to historically high rain, uh, we've had to delay. And our expectation and hope is that we will be drilling uh, in the first quarter of um uh, of next year. There's three other properties. There's the Lepiol, um, uh, Lithium Property in Newfoundland and Labrador. We've got some assays pending there. Uh, there's the Nickel Copper Project, uh, the Sawyer Nickel Copper Project in Michigan, and of course the Lara Copper Property in Peru. Um, I would encourage you to have a look at our website for more details on those, or please don't hesitate to contact me directly at mm at gbml.ca. I thank you very much for your time today. Hi there, my name is Graham Downs. I'm the President and CEO of ATAC Resources. Thank you very much for taking a moment to learn a little about uh, ATAC. Um, we're in a copper gold exploration company uh, focused in the Yukon and BC and uh, on occasion uh, down in Nevada. So um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the projects. Uh, we have the Rack the Gold project in North uh, Yukon. Uh, we've just recently put out a, an updated resource on that. Um, we've got two deposits there. 
in the Osiris, we uh, just announced over 700,000 ounces at uh, over four grams and uh, just over a million ounces at almost 3.5 grams. So really nice deposit out at uh, the Osiris there and at the western end of the Rack and Gold project. We've got 464,000 ounces there in oxide at over three grams as well. So Rack the Gold project has a, a very nice high, two very nice high grade uh, gold deposits. Um, elsewhere in the Yukon, we have the Connaught project at the western end, uh, west of Dawson City, and it's a copper porphyry target there. We did about uh, 2,500 meters of drilling in two, uh, this year, 2022. Uh, results are still pending there. And then we have a very exciting project called the Catch, uh, just southeast of CarMax. It's a brand new discovery in an area that uh, has never been explored before. We're getting uh, percent, percent and a half, up to 2% copper at the Catch project with really nice gold grades along with it. So we did uh, quite a lot of prospecting IP there this year. Um, we did a small drill program, uh, so but none of those results are out yet. So stay tuned for that. We're really, really pumped about that uh, project. And then uh, moving down into BC, we have uh, what's called the Pill property. This is a, a project that we optioned earlier this year. Uh, it's uh, right in the heart of the Tudagon, uh, right next door to Benchmark, uh, TDG, AMARC, where, where uh, Freeport is uh, earning in on a project there, um, road accessible. And uh, we did uh, a lot of prospecting uh, a lot of geophysics IP there as well. Uh, we even sampled uh, a lot of the old core from the Atlas project. Um, so we, we're going to get assays from that along with 50 to 100 uh, uh, prospecting samples as well. So very exciting there, very hot, uh, fertile area, uh, busy with exploration. Um, so we're earning on that. We will be back in there next year. So, so lots of news to still to come out on that. And then, um, yeah, and then I, I, at uh, the Pill as well, the Pill South, very, very exciting project. I really encourage you to follow along, see the results that come out of there this year. We're getting very nice copper numbers and gold from Pill South. We're going to need to do a lot more work there next year and uh, hopefully drill it. So, um, you know, these are the key, key projects in the company. We continue to look for new opportunities in Nevada as well, just to have that off-season work. Um, but the you know there's a lot going on with attack we have uh we have almost five million dollars so we're well well cashed up we've got lots of great uh projects balanced out with copper and gold um so there's a lot of lot of opportunities uh lots more news to come and uh so follow along and it should be an exciting Hello, my name is Ben Whiting. I'm the president and CEO of Orex Minerals, Inc. Um, we're a company that's been around for a few years as we've worked on different projects, uh, spun out different projects into other companies, and uh, have made money for shareholders. Uh, there are some forward-looking statements I'll make in the next few minutes. And uh, one of those forward-looking statements is that we're looking at some new property submissions in Mexico. Mexico is a place where we have a lot of experience. Uh, Orex Minerals is part of the Belcara Group management team, and Belcara Group ha currently has four companies in its umbrella, but it allows us uh, to access skills from a variety of different parts of the team to suit particular needs of each individual company while keeping the uh, general costs down. Uh, for each individual company. So the Belcara Group, you may have heard of them before. Um, it's quite well known for the discovery of La Preciosa in Mexico, and that's in the state of Durango. Orex has the benefit of also working in the state of Durango and has two joint venture projects in Durango. One project is a joint venture with Pan American Silver Corporation. Pan American uh, is very well known in Mexico. They're a producing mining company, and they're the world's second largest silver mining company. The other joint venture, called the Conetto Project, is in the heart of Durango, and it's with Fresneo PLC. Fresneo is a Mexican national company listed on the London Stock Exchange, and they are the world's largest silver mining company. So you can see our partners are certainly well-known and large organizations and we're 
one of those junior companies that can provide the expertise in the exploration side that gets a project ready for the majors. Uh, the projects we'll describe today is, uh, we'll start with Kineto. Kineto with Fresneo is right in the heart of the silver trend on the Mesa Central, the high plateau in the central part of Mexico between the Sierra Madre Occidental Mountains and the Sierra Madre Oriental Mountains. That area is well known for having some giant silver deposits. Kineto is a window of the lower volcanic successions exposed um, with the upper volcanics wrapped around it. And that window is about 17 kilometers by four kilometers wide. And it includes about 50 different veins. Our first resource estimate on that property came out recently and it has um, a gold and silver, roughly 50, 50 by value, 538,000 ounces of, of gold equivalent. If you're thinking in terms of silver, that's about 40 million ounces of silver. Moving a little towards the north, um, you come to the Sandra project near the town of Tepehuanes. That's with Pan American Silver Corporation. And that joint venture has a resource on the property of 33 million ounces of silver. Recently, we just finished a phase of reconnaissance drilling, looking at a much larger portion of the Caldera complex. And we can see how that um, project is evolving with changes in mineralogy as you're heading towards the northwest. In British Columbia, the third project is called Jumping Josephine, and it's actually available right now for potential optioning or sale. And it's near the town of Castlegar. It has a small gold resource, a nice plum near surface, and it's something that uh, doesn't fit with the rest of the corporate um, project portfolio. So that's why we may be uh, spinning it out separately. Um, but that particular property is still of value. It's a large land holding in the Kootenays of British Columbia. So in total with the joint ventures, 100% um, of Jumping Josephine we have with Oryx. Um, we have on the Sander project a 60-40 joint venture with Pan American Silver. Conetto's a 55-45 joint venture with Fresneo. So Oryx's share of the mineral resources on the projects comes to about 36 million ounces of silver, uh, silver equivalent. Um, so most of that is, is silver because Sandra is all silver. So this gives you a sense of where the company is at this stage. But property submissions are important, and we are evaluating new projects in Mexico. As well, we, uh, we take um, very seriously the environment and the kind of work that we do in our communities, um, that we have a community engagement programs, and a lot of people like to know about ESG, which is environmental, social, and governance. Those are important com components, but it's not just something that we're recently paying attention to. We've been paying attention to those aspects in our companies for decades, getting involvement with the local communities and agreement with the uh, Ejido councils in Mexico um, to provide local incentives and support um, in tree planting around schools or uh, hospital assistance. There's a variety of ways you can help the local community. We're proud of the work that we've done. We've made discoveries and we have made money for shareholders in the past. I say right now that there is more to be discovered. My name's Mike Berkey. I'm a director and the vice president of corporate development for Sika Gold Corp. Uh, Going to give you a brief introduction of the company here and uh, why you should invest in us. 
Um, we're a we're a discovery focused company. Our main asset is the RC Gold project in the Yukon, where we've made a significant discovery within the Tombstone Gold Belt. That's a prolific belt of rocks which hosts the Fort Knox Mine in uh, Alaska and Victoria Gold's Eagle Mine in the Yukon. We have a very experienced management team. Uh, more undervalued compared to our peers in the Yukon, making uh, uh, making discoveries within the Tombstone Gold Belt. Uh, but we also have exposure to other projects in Nevada, Arizona, and Nunavut. So I'll just go through a few of those and uh, and uh, let you know what we're up to. So the RC Gold Project, as I mentioned, that's our main focus. We've done 6,500 meters of drilling there in 2022, following up on the discovery of uh, Hole 21 in our Blackjack Zone that returned 220 meters of 1.17 grams per ton gold. Uh, we also just completed a 1,500 meter four-hole program on the Alpha Gold Project in Nevada. That's about 40 kilometers southeast of uh, Barrick and Newmont's uh, Cortez Mine Complex. So a pretty uh, sweet piece of real estate down there. Uh, we're also uh, looking at, uh, we have the Burrow Creek Project in Arizona. That's an epithermal gold silver uh, target. Uh, it has a historical resource of 5 million ounces of silver and 120,000 ounces of gold on that. We also have a a couple base metal projects, the OGI, which is a silver lead zinc sedimentary exhalative target uh, in the Yukon and the Copper Mine River target, which uh, is in northern Nunavut, which has uh, both uh, bulk tonnage, uh, copper and high grade uh, copper potential. So as I mentioned, we're we're a discovery focused company. Our management team has a lot of geologists on it. I'm a geologist myself and we're excited about the projects we have and the success we've been having and uh, look forward to uh, working on both our more advanced projects but also the other ones like Copper Mine uh, that has uh, great potential for copper in the northern part of Canada. So the RC Goal project in the Yukon Road accessible district scale property made a pretty great uh, discovery with that hole 21. Um, we did two phases of drilling, as I mentioned, 6,500 meters in 2022. Uh, we have all those results back except for the last five holes that we're hoping we receive very shortly. So we're, we're nearing completion there. The goal is to uh, take the results of the drilling to date and come up with a maiden resource. So that's what we're looking at doing this year. We've done initial metallurgical test work as well. Bottle roll test averaged 85% recovery in gold. So uh, no surprises there. It's uh, very similar to our peers, uh, like we see at the, the Fort Knox and the uh, and the Victoria Gold Mine. Uh, Eagle Gold Deposit, Victoria Gold, before they started mining there, their resource was uh, 207 million tons, grading 0.6 grams per ton gold with a 0.15 uh, gram per ton cutoff. Uh, Fort Knox mines an even lower grade. Their resource is 0.3 grams per ton. And recently, Banyan Gold announced a 4 million ounce resource at the Ormac project, which has a grade of uh, 0.6 grams per ton with a 0.2 to 0.3 gram per ton cutoff. So in that context, following up on that blackjack discovery in the winter drill program, we did another four holes. Um, these intersections are all from surface, 273 meters of 0.5 grams. That includes 62 meters at 1.2 grams, 107 meters at 1.44 grams per ton, 205 meters at 1.01, 350 meters at 0.71. That includes 220 meters at 1.01. So a lot of great numbers coming out of the blackjack. Two kilometers to the east is the Iger zone, which uh, received uh, drilling in 2021 before the, the blackjack discovery, which uh, reshifted our focus, but a lot of work to do in the Iger. Again, uh, the intrusion there, uh, we had intersections such as 57 meters of half a gram, 1.39 at 1.61, 72 at 0.72, et cetera. So again, an intrusion hosted uh, style of deposit or occurrence, similar to what we're seeing elsewhere in the tombstone belt. We're getting mineralization both in the intrusions as well as in the peripheral metasedimentary rocks saddle zone that's midway between the uh, Iger and the Blackjack, so a kilometer away from both 80 meters at 0.59 grams per ton. So we've got a lot of work left there. Um, Alpha Gold, as I mentioned, 40 kilometers southeast of the Cortez Mine Complex in Nevada. Best results to date. Uh, this is not a concept anymore. It's a discovery. 
Uh, hole 9 and 10 from this year's drilling program. Hole 9 returned 10.7 meters of 0.5 grams per tonne. Hole 10 returned 21 meters of 1.2 grams per tonne gold, including 1.5 meters of 4.62. This is in stratigraphy that hosts the uh, the gold rush deposit. It's called the Horse Canyon equivalent. Uh, it's not the main host to uh, what they're seeing at the gold bar and the gold rush. That's deeper down in the stratigraphic package. So getting these grades in the style of mineralization higher up is very exciting. And then, of course, we're exposed to copper in northern Canada, a great target there. So we're excited about our future. We've got a lot of good things to do. We've made discoveries. We have good projects in our pipeline. So that's what you should uh, take away from Sitco Gold. Hello, and welcome to Element 29 Resources, where we're advancing new copper deposits in Peru, the world's second largest copper producing country and a top tier mining jurisdiction. E29 is advancing both our Eleta copper deposit and our Fleur de Cobre project in Peru with a focus on growing its copper resources and expanding mineralization on multiple untested targets. Both projects have returned well mineralized copper intercepts from recent drilling and are strategically located at lower elevations and near major infrastructure, including roads, power lines, ports, water, and skilled workforces. At Eleta, Elida is a new, newly discovered zone of porphyry copper mineralization within a large two by two kilometer alteration system, enclosing a, in, enclosing a cluster of porphyry centers that represent five distinct exploration targets. The project is located in west central Peru, approximately 85 kilometers inland from the Pacific coast at moderate elevations of between 1500 to 2000 meters. And once again, close to infrastructure, including transportation, power, a 45 megawatt hydroelectric generating facility and situated just which is situated just 15 kilometers from the project. We've recently released our initial mineral resource estimate at Elida, outlining an inferred resource of 322 million tons, grading 0.32% copper for a total of 2.24 billion pounds of contained copper, plus 0.03% molybdenum and 2.6 grams per ton silver, using a 0.2 copper cutoff grade and a low model strip ratio of 0.74 to 1. Within that, uh, there is a near surface higher grade subset of that resource consisting of 34 million tons of 0.55% copper, 0.037% molybdenum and 4.4 grams per ton gold using a, a 0.45 copper cutoff grade. And this actually has potential to be mined with minimal stripping in initial years of a potential mining operation. Additionally, the significant molybdenum and silver grades that we've reported have the potential to enhance the economics of the deposit subject to metallurgical test work. We've recently committed, we've recently initiated a phase two drill program at Elida to test for extensions of this identified higher grade mineralization internal to the zone one deposit and to start testing some of the other porphyry targets on the project area. At our Florida Cobre project, it is a multiple copper porphyry system located in the Southern Peru Copper Belt, which hosts some of the world's largest copper molybdenum porphyry deposits and mines, including Freeport's large Serra Verde mine. Florida Cobre hosts two copper porphyry targets, Candelaria that hosts a historic copper resource of approximately 57 million tons of 0.67% copper associated with a super gene enrichment blanket and our Atravisado target, which is a large 1.5 kilometer diameter porphyry. We recently committed, completed a drill program at Candelaria in mid-2022, and that data is now feeding into a planned initial mineral resource estimate that's planned for early 2023. At Atravisado, we're also currently permitting a planned drill program for this big porphyry system in 2023, and we're excited to test that system going forward. Element 29 has delivered on key catalysts in 2022, and we're really excited for what's in store in 2023. For more information on Element 29 resources, please visit e29copper.com. Thank you. Hello from the Iberian Pirate Belt of Portugal. I'm Paul Kuhn, President and CEO of Avrupa Minerals Limited. Our TSX symbol is AVU. Avrupa is an early stage project generator company utilizing a sort of hybrid uh, business model that gives us the opportunity to option out our projects for earn and joint venture at an early exploration stage, or if warranted, uh, supporting our projects further along through the exploration timeline, timeline and in development. 
We work in stable European jurisdictions, mostly around historic mining areas uh, and old mining districts, and particularly in areas of copper, zinc, and gold mining. We presently operate in Portugal at our Alvalade Copper Zinc joint venture, uh, joint venture with Sandfire Matza. The exploration program is fully funded by the partner uh, who can earn into 85% of the project by completing a feasibility study. Presently, we're drilling exploration holes along a 12-kilometer uh, trend of the, Iper I of the Iper Iberian pyrite belt uh, between the historic Cavera and Luzal uh, copper zinc iron mines. We will return to uh, drilling our Sesmarius massive sulfide deposit in Q1 or early Q2 2023. Here we have a 2,000, almost 2,000 uh, meter strike length of known massive sulfide mineralization that we've really only tested uh, in detail for the northern 500 to 600 meters. Uh, we expect to uh, do the central and southern districts of the Sesmarius po uh, project with uh, more detailed drilling in the coming, uh, coming early part of 2023. In Kosovo, we've disco we discovered the Slavovo gold deposit uh, and have in just enlisted a new partner there, uh, Kosovo domiciled Western Tethian Re uh, Resources. Western Tethian Resources, or WTR, is 75% owned by London-based Ariana Resources, a successful small mine builder. The Slavovo, the Slavovo deposit contains 640,000 metric tons of about 5 grams per ton gold, uh, mineable from uh, from the surface. WTR is fully funding uh, a, do, a detailed due diligence, which we hope will lead to a full earn-in joint venture. And in the JV, uh, WTR can earn 85% of the program by funding a feasibility study and completing a mining license application. We expect the, that their parent company will be most helpful in, in the decision to uh, build a, a gold mine in Kosovo. In Finland, where we have just started, Avrupa is in the process of purchasing a private Finnish exploration company with three uh, copper zinc uh, applications in the historic Piasalmi mining district and one gold reservation in the emerging Oyarvi greenstone hosted gold district. Two of the applications have uh, two of the Piasalmi applications have known copper zinc mineralization, a massive sulfide mineralization, and one of them, Kangas Yarve, has been uh, mined uh, a bit in the, in the past. The company has identified drill targets on on all of all of the Piasalmi applications and is preparing an actual exploration application submission for the gold uh, reservation in the near future. All four licenses are located in central Finland. Presently, we are moving two of the applications that would be Piasami and uh, Kalima, sorry, uh, Kangasyarvi and Kalima uh, to through the permitting process and, and having um, town hall sort of meetings in the next couple of weeks. Avrupa's strength are a strong and active board, including mining engineer, geologists, and uh, financial people. We have a strong financial team in Vancouver, well experienced in fundraising and dealing with small uh, Canadian uh, exploration companies. And we have a successful technical team based in Europe. We've got two fully funded projects in Portugal and Kosovo, potentially leading to copper, zinc, and gold production in the future. We have an active grassroots and brownfields exploration program in Finland with drilling ready to go in Q1 or Q2 of 2023. The company continues to progress in tough exploration environment in three dis jurisdictions. Two projects are fully funded, and one program is funded by Avrupa itself through the end of Q1, Q2, 2023. Thank you very much.